I love singing the Hallelujah Chorus from Handel's Messiah. I do not sing well, but I do sing with enthusiasm. Most all of the churches I've pastored or been part of over the years regularly include the Hallelujah Chorus on Easter Sunday as the choral anthem or as a postlude ending the Easter worship on a Hallelujah High note. A few congregations dare to use the Hallelujah Chorus as a congregational hymn. The story of how Handel composed the Hallelujah Chorus has some parallels with the story of Thomas and the risen Jesus from the Gospel of John. Both Thomas and Handel are at low points in their lives, locked away from the outside world. Both emerge from their isolation with great affirmations of faith. With Handel, we sing King of Kings and Lord of Lords. With Thomas, we affirm Jesus as our Lord and our God. We today are locked away in our own homes, anxious about the virus and anxious about our lives. But the good news is that the risen Jesus comes to us where we are to comfort us in our fear and to strengthen our faith. Handel was born in Italy in 1685, and by his 20s, he was composing popular and well-received music, first in Italy and then in London. But in 1737, Handel suffered a debilitating physical setback, either a stroke or rheumatism or a nervous breakdown. It affected his ability to play and perhaps even his comprehension. Handel's popularity had also experienced a setback. His works were not as regarded as they had been in his heyday. In 1741, Handel received a compilation of scriptural passages which point to Jesus as the Christ, as the Messiah. Passages from Isaiah like, the glory of the Lord shall be revealed and all people will see it together and also, for unto us a child is born, unto us a son is given. Handel took those passages, and in August of 1741, he shut himself in his London home, locked the door, and began composing music to the scriptures. Twenty-three days later, Handel unlocked the doors to his house, and the world had the Messiah and the Hallelujah Chorus in which we sing about Jesus, King of Kings and Lord of Lords. Our scripture passage this morning focuses on the disciple Thomas, commonly known as Doubting Thomas, who has also experienced a debilitating setback and is also at a low point in his life. Thomas's Rabuni, his teacher, Jesus, has died a shameful death on the cross. And it seems that the religious authorities want to put an end to Jesus' followers, too. On the third day after Jesus' crucifixion, most of his disciples have locked themselves in a room, heartbroken and afraid. Thomas is not with them. Fear and disappointment drive wedges between us. Fear and disappointment separate us from one another, and fear and disappointment divide our souls. Most of us these days feel locked up in our own rooms. We're afraid of getting sick and we're fearful that we might inadvertently make others sick. We're disappointed and heartbroken that we can't work and play and study as we normally do. And we're anxious about the state of our homes and the state of our country and the state of the whole world. Hear the good news. When Handel unlocked his door, he shared with the world a masterpiece of musical composition, King of Kings and Lord of Lords. Legend has it that when King George II first heard the piece, he leapt to his feet and others followed. And that's why to this day we stand for the Hallelujah Chorus. It is also possible King George, who was partially deaf, misheard the music and stood because he thought it was the national anthem. In our scripture passage this morning, when most of the disciples were locked in their upper room, 
the risen Jesus himself comes through and says to them, Peace be with you. My spirit, my presence, my mercy, I give to you to give to others. The disciples share the good news with Thomas, who at that point could not unlock himself from his fear and disappointment. Thomas says to the others, Not until I see him and touch him myself will I believe. One week later, Thomas is still locked away in a room with his fear and his unbelief. But then, the risen Jesus shows himself to Thomas. Jesus offers his hand and his sides to Thomas. Jesus gives Thomas what he needs to let fear and anger and disappointment die so that Thomas can practically sing to Jesus and sing to the world, my Lord and my God. Doubting Thomas is now believer Thomas. The good news for us this day is that the risen Jesus meets us where we are, hunkered down in our homes with anxiety and uncertainty and fear locked in our souls. The risen Jesus says to us, peace be with you. Peace be with you. His Holy Spirit surrounds us like the air we breathe. We, we breathe in his peace and we exhale fear. We breathe in his peace and we exhale anxiety. I may not sing the Hallelujah Chorus with any amount of skill, but as I said, I sing with enthusiasm. We may not be able to leave our homes like we used to, but the risen Jesus is with us in our homes and with us in our fear and our anxiety. We may not be able to touch Jesus in the same way that Thomas did, but we let the Holy Spirit of Jesus dwell in our hearts so that with our words and our deeds, we can say and we can sing, Jesus is King of kings and Lord of lords. With believer Thomas, we affirm Jesus is our Lord and our God. Thanks be to God. What follows next in the next video clip is a credo statement written and read by Kalu Abba, an eighth grader and confirmation student at Trinity. A credo statement is a statement of belief. I believe this. After you watch, after you watch uh, Kalu read his credo, I invite you to read it aloud as an affirmation of our Christian faith. 